In this video, we're going to take a look at a specific case of one dimensional motion called free fall. And free fall is, by definition, um, when an object is moving only under the influence of gravity. This means you get to make certain assumptions about the motion. For example, the only allowable force is gravity. Now what this implies is that you must ignore air resistance. If you want to include air resistance, you're going to re uh, need a special set of math skills that's going to require some calculus and the use of differential equations to be able to do anything meaningful with air resistance. The nice thing about uh, free fall is that we get to use all of the same equations and techniques that we've used before. So there's really nothing new to learn here. It's just learning the specific uh, limitations of this particular type of motion. The third implication is that all objects accelerate at the same rate. So acceleration is going to be given a special letter and we're going to say that A is equal to G where G is the acceleration due to gravity. So little g is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. Now you cannot write a capital G for little g because capital G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. And that means absolutely nothing to you at this point. But my point is they're not the same letter. And so in physics, we always have to pay special attention to what is the case of our letter. Is it a capital letter or a lowercase letter? Um, now, G near the surface of the earth this is the near earth approximation g near the surface of the earth is 9.8 meters per second squared downward do not make the mistake of saying that g is equal to a negative 9.8 meters per second squared the problem with this reasoning is that it's only valid with a conventional coordinate system if you say that positive is in the downward direction, you would be incorrect in writing this statement for G. So in this course, we're always going to use a conventional coordinate system. And that means this is always going to be a true statement, having the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. You should not automatically assume that it's a negative 9.8 because that negative sign is indicating down and down could be a positive direction and you have to pay attention even your textbook examples will sometimes say that positive is in the downward direction and so that that becomes a big deal fourthly we can assume that anytime something is dropped dropped is the same thing as saying that v initial is equal to zero and we're going to utilize the symmetries of free fall and we'll talk about that in a moment. But this is a big deal because this is implied information and it is not explicitly stated in most problems. You just have to know that acceleration is 9.8. A dropped rock has a zero initial velocity. Um, so just pay attention to that. You'll catch on as you do more and more of this. Now, one thing I want you to be very aware of, and that is this. Oftentimes we're asked, how fast is an object moving when it strikes the ground? All right, let me be very clear about this. I don't know how to make this any more plain. Never, ever, ever never is it zero 
okay when we say it strikes the ground how fast is it moving we're talking about the instant it touches the ground but has not yet had the opportunity to begin slowing down so this is going to be not zero but it will be the maximum possible speed which is achieved okay now let's take a look at the symmetry of free fall and what I'm going to do is draw a path. Now, the path of a, of a ball which is thrown straight up, it's going to go up, and then it's going to come right back down along that same path. I don't want to do that because I want to be able to demonstrate the symmetries in free fall. So I'm going to draw the path like this. It's going to go straight up, and then I'm going to make it, give myself some room, and then bring it back down okay so that's going to be our path um, but it should be lined up on top of itself like this because that's physically what would be happening so we're going to say that down here y is equal to zero and at this location the ball is thrown upwards so this is going to be t initial and at t initial there is a v initial and it's going to be quite large and then as it goes up at some other time we're going to say that this is time t1 this is t naught down here there's going to be a velocity which is upwards but it's going to be a smaller velocity and then when we reach this point it's going to be an even smaller velocity we're going to call this t2 when it reaches the maximum height, v is equal to zero. That's a turning point. And then if we go straight across, now we have the exact same velocity that was up, but it's going to be the same speed in the downward direction. So it's the opposite velocity, but same magnitude. And then we have over here, again, it's the same downward velocity as it was an upward velocity. And then finally we get this one. And so this is V final here. Okay, so one of the things that we look at is at the very top of the motion, the acceleration is equal to G. In fact, the acceleration is equal to G everywhere in this motion. And how do we know that? Well, we know that because gravity is what's causing the acceleration. And gravity doesn't disappear just because the object reached the top of its path. Now, gravity should be in the downward direction at all times. How do we know that gravity is pointing downward at all times? Well, that comes from our understanding of acceleration. We said that acceleration as it relates to speed, and that if the speed increases, then the signs of velocity and acceleration were the same. And if the speed decreases, they were different. Okay, so here we have the velocity is up, but in our next second, when we look at our next location, the speed has decreased. That's going to tell us the acceleration is down. And the same thing as we get the T2, this is T3, this is t4 and finally this is t5 okay so um, clearly the acceleration must be pointing down then on the way down the velocity is downward and the speed is increasing and that tells us that the sign of gravity must also be pointing in the down direction okay um, some other things to take note of and that would be when you look at any particular elevation v is the, or i should say the magnitude of v or the speed is the same for the object here here down here at the bottom at ground level all right um, we could also take note that the time interval from here to here i'll call this uh, let's see this one here we'll call delta t1 this one we'll call delta T2. 
So we have these two different time intervals. Well, here, delta t3 is equal to delta t2, and here, delta t4 is equal to delta t1. So again, these are all symmetries that we see within free fall. When you graph free fall, the position time graph for the motion that we have here, this is going to be position versus time, it's going to plot out as a parabola because it is accelerated motion. The parabola is going to open in the downward direction called concave downward, and that's because the acceleration is negative in this coordinate system. And the object is initially moving in the up direction, so it's going to have a positive velocity or it's going to be an upward slope, and then it's going to reach the pinnacle or the, the peak, and then it's going to be a downward slope. So right here, we're going to say that this is, um, oh, I didn't label that. Well, we'll label that as uh, T-top. All right, so right here is uh, T-top. And so we have a parabola that does this. Okay, now, it is very tempting to look at this and to think that this is the path of something which has been thrown. But in order for that to be true, this would have to be the y dimension on the y axis, which it is, the position in the y dimension. But the x axis would have to represent the x dimension, and it doesn't. It's actually only representing the time dimension. So this is not the path of something that you threw. It's not a path of a baseball or something like that. Okay, and then let's take a look at the velocity graph. Okay, so now this is velocity versus time. And the velocity graph, if you look at this, we start with a large positive velocity. We'll put that right here. And then we end up with a large negative velocity which is equal in size to the positive velocity so we'll say this is v initial this is v final which is equal to a negative v initial all right so we start at this point the acceleration is constant which means the slope of this line that we create for the velocity time graph is going to be uh, a straight line and it's going to be negative because the acceleration is negative. And so we're going to do this. Okay, and right here is where it ends. Okay, so this is all the basics of free fall. Um, it, like I said, it's not really any different from doing any other kinematics problem. Um, you just have to get used to identifying information which is not explicitly given to you. And some of that I've identified here.